and away Alistair because like I said, you're still afraid of that champion, but they still want to make a bunch of picks here. Right, the avant guard don't like choo-choos, by the way. That's what I'm learning. Uh, well, yeah, already. yeah. I mean, I think you have to ban those two champions every single time. I don't think Kenste can get out of lane against choo-choos if he gets Syndra, and I don't think the team can get out of the 20-minute mark if they give choo-choos Zed. So I think those bans can't go anywhere. Like I see, I'm surprised they are banning Thresh when Egypt can play it, but I want to see what the next pinch is here. Yeah, Alistair does get banned. Okay, so that is gone. Oh, man. So there's a big world of champions open. The Trist is still open specifically. And I'm just trying to think now what... Rise is open as well. Oh, yeah, I forgot about and that. there he goes. All right. Rise for Tally back in the top lane. He's going to be incredible on this champion, I believe. His mechanics are very good. Rise, not necessarily the best champion to show mechanics on. But when he's so laid down on any team fight so well, what better champion than Rise to secure a victory? And that's what I'm going to talk about. Team fighting in particular, we've just really praise Legacy for team fighting. Ryze is a fantastic champion when you have a very aware top laner in team fights because it's so important to switch targets and maximize your damage because Rune Prison is just a dumb CC when it hits you. Oh man, it's pretty ludicrous. Now, on the other side though for Avangard, as, as they you know they're gonna be fighting up against Ryze, I do like a Trist pick here. It steals it away from Cardrid, a champion that they've been forced to respect time and time again. It also means if Legacy now lane swap, well this Trist is gonna get a free farm lane which is something you don't typically want to give them. Yazora gets the Kha'Zix away as well, which I think is very smart. Uh, These games are going a little bit later, and Kha'Zix is good then. So Rengar's open, by the way. Oh my god. <laughs> I just realized. I, just, I was like, I was like oh, wait. yeah, they'll be Kha'Zix. Right, what other bands are we missing? The Rengar band, of course. Why even bother taking Kha'Zix? You know he's going to pick this champion up. I saw Kha'Zix, and I was like, oh yeah, that's a nice fucking pick. Wait a second. Yeah. And there's Rengar locked in for Carbon. And he was like, not allowed to play this. And this is why, oh my god, so yeah, so this is going to be ludicrous. I, this is actually part of why I'm surprised that Kha'Zix was grabbed, because you know, one, Rengar's coming, and two, I think the best support left is actually Nami here, and that's been taken away right off the bat by Egypt. Now, because of the ban phase, they have removed most of the pick potential of Egypt. He's been a big team fight starter. Nami, not great at that, and maybe this is enough then uh, to push him down on Nami that he's going to be removed as a playmaker and it puts more on Carbon's shoulders? We'll have to see. Yeah, I think Carbon and Tally now, especially with the champions they've got in this game, the onus is a little more on them to start this agree. team. But I mean, uh, Egypt still loves Nami. He loves playing that champion. He's very confident on it. It was his favorite champion in the last tournament, in fact. He just played a ton of So he can make plays on it, but you're right, it's not as proactive a champion right. as something like Alistair. And this is how Legacy are winning. Like, you look back at their series against Chiefs, you look at their series so far, they're starting every single game five to one in kills because someone's making a play somewhere. Like, they're getting it just by doing really cool things with early vision control and playing smart with their champions. If you remove the pick potential, you create very good situations for Avatar where they don't start the game 0-5. I'm sorry, I saw a team over a second, got a little too excited, but Zillion's actually locked in. Also left open, by the way. Yep. Forgot about him. Well, that's the thing is, is I, so I kind of believe that like, you don't have to ban VOPs, yep. especially if you can play them yourself. I think it's kind of silly to not learn these types of champions. <clears throat> oh so, my god. That, that's a big risk, I think, but um, they're banning the individual champions that guys in Legacy play. I don't, uh, you know, like they're banning out a, a sort of a play style, right? All this early mid game power and saying, look, yes, you can play Zillion. Maybe you get to late game and he's good there, but You've been winning your games in the early game. You can't do that now. Yeah, and Vayne is a very curious pick here. That screams lane swap to me. Kadra does not want to play against... I mean, Tristan's okay, he's, fight, he's facing Trist Leona. Vayne's actually one of the best champions against Leona. You can tumble the ulti. Um, Nami can't really stop uh, a Zenith Blade, so she'll get on top of you, probably. But you can outrage Trist with a tumble. You can deal damage through her W shield because of Silver Bolts. I actually like Vayne pretty well in this matchup, and I think Nami is really good as a pairing as well. So the two on two would be fine, in my opinion. Sure. But we gotta see what the matchups end it's up. It's a bold pick for sure though. Kadrid, his favorite champion is Vayne. If he's just jumping in the Vayne right now, he must be feeling really good after that first game. And Veritas is a fantastic Vayne player as well. Oh, he is. So that's interesting. For me though, Kadrid's Rengar might just be the story of this game. And my absolute favorite champion in the world to pair with Rengar is Zillion. It's just oh, dear. silliness. The, it's the, silly, the, it's the so silly. Cat. Yeah, Speedy Cat. Oh, man. And I hope he picks Night Hunter Rengar, so he's like blue and it's kind of like oh. Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, we've got to get the synergy going and I'm going to hope for that one. So, Xerath the lock in here for Avant Guard. So, look at these lineups. Legacy have a very good late game ahead of them. You get into the 35 minute team fights, Ryze and Rengar, either of them reviving, Vayne cleanup, Nami is a pretty good control support. So, uh, Legacy does have 
good setup tools with Carbon, and then good follow up with the rest of the team. It's very single target focused. The big wombos are not going to be a good thing for them, but they don't have to fight them because they've got so much individual playmaking. Avant Guard, though, very team fight focused, and they're very good at starting team fights. Leona into Maokai into Xerath follow up. They can make battles happen, and they are kind of like a freight train. They will follow through, and you will get just killed. Like, just damage keeps coming through in this lineup for Avant Guard. And if they start a fight under their terms, it's very difficult for Legacy. And it's funny to me that we've almost swapped team comps between these two. Bit. It wasn't like they were much closer in terms of mid game power level before. We've really created a divide here where we have very polarizing composition, uh, compositions almost, where very aggressive mid game and early game focused for Avant and super late game coming through for Legacy. That's where they're comfortable, where they've shown they've been comfortable in late, yeah. in best of five series. They're happy to play long and late. They love mm -hmm. it, in fact. I mean, the weird thing as well, though, is we talk about the strengths and weaknesses of the teams. Neither actually feel all that clean to me. I bet the team comp in seven sentences, it means there's like no like clear, obvious one, like one synergy. It's like, okay, yeah, there's some good late game here, but you know, Zillion falls off late in the mid lane. Probably not in support role. Support Zillion, I think, has a great late game ahead of him. Mid Zillion, not so much. He just no longer has damage. And so the only damage that this team has late game is just Rise, just Vayne. Vayne can be caught. Rise, kind of hard to kill, but <clears throat> that's actually kind of scary situation in front of them. On the other side for Avant Guard, okay, yes, they've got this great early game, they've got a lot of situations that they can create, but they still have Trist Kha'Zix. Like, they actually still have some very good late games. So, uh, you've got a kind of a very mixed set of strengths and weaknesses on both sides. They fight differently, but times in game are actually fairly Bucky. close, I would does, say. Does check that brush with the sap because we are under the rift. But game two here, Legacy have started this series 1 0 up, and now they'll swap over to the blue side here. Avant, of course, on the red side here for this game. And I agree. And for me, the most interesting thing about what's happened now is we've kind of swapped playmakers on Legacy. Yes. True Trues and Tally were the playmakers in that last game for sure. Now it's really on uh, Carbon and I guess Tally as well a little bit, but from, uh, maybe even Carbon actually is more accurate because Ejim and yeah. Choo Choo's, who made lots of plays last game, aren't going to be making as many on these types of champions. I think it is Carbon and Carbon. I think I agree with you completely here. Um, and I'm actually kind of doing the mental check on what duels can Karjan win. Anytime you see a split push, you want to know which champions can you beat. When Chichis was on Zed, he was ahead of Mundo. He was split pushing before Zonia's came out, before QSS came out, so he could win any split push. And Chichis got down to an inhibitor by doing that. So, hey, good job when you were on Zed. When Karjan's on Vayne, can he do the same thing? Well, I think you can battle Maokai. I think you can battle Kha'Zix. I think you can battle Tristana. I think you can battle Xerath as long as it's a 1v1. He has to chase to get these kills, and so he can pull a lot of attention, he can maybe escape, and the rest of Legacy can make plays. So I do think this is a map that will work for Carbon split push. Well, we'll see if Carbon can get it done. Carbon can get it done, sorry. As for me, it's Carbon's Rengar. He, yeah. it's been banned pretty much all tournament. Whenever he plays it, seems like, yeah, let's not do that again. Avant Guard have left it to him this time around. We'll see if he can make some plays. It looks like double jungling once again, actually. And I like this one, like, see, they are going to start off in a land swap. Okay, so Trist Leona. The cool thing about this, um, uh, what's it called? Yeah, the Relic Shield, there we go, is that you can use a stack and then go and do things. This is part of why I don't like coin all that much, is because you have to, like, sit in lane to get any gold out of it. And it just sometimes is a pretty poor investment. It's not going to be the case here for Nada. He gets to go, he can roam down, he can try to oh, contest man. buffs. Ejim contesting buffs certainly very well, he's, but he's got to be careful. He's 2v1ing, by the way. He's just buying some time. He does have his red buff. Come on, and Tally have rotated. Though. That's a good exhaust, but they don't quite have enough follow-up CC. Bubble can Carbon come doesn't with. have CC yeah. either. But they're just going to... Ooh, Flash forced away there as well. Carbon actually using that brush very nicely. And they're going to go for this blue buff in there. This is very aggressive, but the dual lane's up towards the top lane. Nada has rotated down as well. But Legacy are getting very frisky here in the early stages. No, this should be a three-buff coming in. Yep, is going to get jumped on his own bubble. Just busy, but it does speed up the Renga. Nada is forced to stun him, and they'll have to run away here. Nothing they can do. Yeah, it's good on Nada to try to roam down, but the problem is Legacy managed to take a buff at the very beginning of the game on the weak side of the map. They snuck their own blue buff despite Avant Guard lane swapping to the top lane, and then they rushed the blue buff knowing they had Ejim and Kardrid there. You saw Ejim try to defend that. He did so the double bubble, bought some time, let Carbon come over, and it was just like a three buff waiting to happen at that point. Once that first 
blue buff take was slowed down, it was guaranteed for Legacy. And it's funny to me, back in winter actually, when uh, both Legacy and Yuzora, so both Carbon and Yuzora were on uh, different branded teams, or in Yuzora's case, an actual different team, there was a, a really nice bit in the video footage done for that event, where Yuzora, who was known as such an aggressive jungle that loved to fight him, Carbon Fantasy said, I will fight him, I'm not afraid. <laughs> and showing that here in this game, really sticking it to Yuzora early on. And it's pretty glorious things right here. Legacy starting out very well in game two now. They're already up in this series. See if Emigard can come back from a little bit behind here at this point. And Legacy I pushing very slowly in this lane. And Egypt is gaining a whole bunch of gold. Yeah, this is what Kadra wants. He's getting free farm pretty much at this point. Gonna get annoyed every now and then, but not too much double melee can do, especially with Porky being level one after all those exchanges. Egypt continuing to bubble and Kadra gonna get aggressive with a tumble there actually. This is the problem with this dual lane, though, is you're play facing double melee against double range, and the damage output of Nada and Porky this early is not high. This is a very, very, very weak two-on-two, -two, whereas Ryze can do fine against Trist. He's not going to get pushed out of lane. He's going to get his farm. His lane swap really screws Avant-Garde. Yeah, and I was, I was going to ask you, it was a bit weird that we kind of shuffled to a very different dual lane with top and support for AB and the standing one here, and it's leaving the top. 1v1 against yeah. Tris, but... This should have been a fast push by Avant Guard. Sitting in a 2-on-2 two -two is just asking to get a gigantic gold deficit through the early game. We saw them fast push over in game one. That went just fine. They took the turret down pretty early on. But this this lane is, is never going to get better. And Kadra just eking out so much free damage. And Ejim, he's got the skill drops calibrated still after that first game. He's uh, oh, after the Thresh games, I suppose. Those bubbles have been hitting every time. And they're beautiful to watch. Now, there is one X-Factor, and it's Ysora. Carbon has to go top lane to help out Taliwaka, who's actually... I gotta take it back, Veritas is doing much better than I thought he would in this matchup. He's doing actually really wonderfully in, in pulling Taliwaka down, who's actually lost his teleport as well, so there's no good recourse for the Rise here. Uh, but Kha'Zix got a ward down, and he actually... Oh, I'm, I'm unfortunately here for Yuzora. He was in the enemy Wraith camp. He could have flanked all the way around through the Skara brush, the tri brush into the <laughs> bottom lane, and gotten a flank kill. And with Leona Maokai, that, that's a killable lane. Yeah, and he might do that now, actually. Uh, there is a ward in the river, but Carbon is covering in this top lane for Tally, who does manage to complete his recall. But he knows where he is now. Carbon will defend against some decent experience, but that's bad news here. Potentially, is not actually going to take quite a bit of damage. Carbon will swap targets over, and now Yuzero is going to come through the lane, it seems like. So he does want to pressure this bottom lane, it seems like. It is worth keeping in mind, Ejim is out of potions now. Not a, who just misses. He's not been hitting many Zenith Blades so far in this game. And you kind of saw that Legacy wanted to pick on Nada in this game. They banned so many supports. And there was an expecting an Alstar ban as well. Nada, we have not seen him play Leona the entire time throughout this tournament. We've got, and we've been on for three weeks now. Right, we saw that. We saw, what, three banned and one picked overall in champ select. And sometimes people don't have deep champion pools. Now, I don't know, again, it is a bad lane, right? Nada has to fish from very far away. The longer, like, the farther away you are with shooting a skill shot, the easier it is to dodge. We're, we're seeing that here from Legacy. Um, again, it's, it's a bad lane to be Leona in the first place. Like, you can't read too much into this off, you know, two missed Zenith Blades, but it's certainly not going well so far. Yeah, Nada here, just gonna take a bit of damage as well. Kadra, very happy by the way, 48 to 54 against his lane opponent, despite the fact that they're in different lanes, so Vayne is getting all the farm in the world. Looks like an early dragon actually might be considered here by Legacy. Oh. Carbon not quite level 6 though. It's a weak duo lane, Taliwaka recalled for a Sapphire Crystal and a finished tier of the Goddess, and his TP is back up, so he actually got to walk back into lane to do this, so... This is Legacy under control, Avantgarde's bottom lane doesn't have much to do, so even though we basically had standard lanes in terms of allocation of number of people, it is an uncontested dragon for Legacy. Yeah, I mean, there's just, again, you mentioned it, the two melee champions can't really do much. Zareth got pushed out. Two just did a good job pushing out that mid wave. Had level six as well. Yuzora, I do like this still, but uh, first dragon does go to Legacy. And this is very smart by Yuzora. There's actually some good things going on by Avant Guard here. First of all, is Kenzie's actually winning his lane. He's at 12 CS in his lane. They got a blue buff steal. Yuzora, Heads up, realizing Dragon was going down. They could probably take three buffs themselves on the second round here, which is pretty impressive. Means they've kind of equalized the buff game. Um, and then suddenly Evan Guard, also keep in mind, Evan was actually ahead in gold before that Dragon went down. Their laning phase is actually winning, largely because of that mid lane. Yeah, and Zveritas also getting free farm as well. So both these fairly late game carries are very comfortable with where the CS is right now. Veritas is going to go back with 70 CS. It's just over in the eight and a half minute mark, which is very respectable. Build Water Colors has been completed, as well as a dagger there for Cardred as well. Tears there stacking up for Choo Choo's and a Chalice there for Zerath. So just some small items coming through. Uh, Rise also, his tier plus a Sapphire Crystal for him. So things going well across the board.
Interesting to actually see the uh, the tier zillion build. I don't see that very much in the mid lane. I see it pretty often for support, but uh, it's going to be a very, very slow build up then for Choo Choo's. His mid is going to be weaker because this he's going to be missing his, missing a themes for a while. And so there's a very, very long lull where really only Carbon is strong right now. And it might be just that Chuchu's wants to kind of match a bit more of the late game power that his team has, but you're right. I mean, he's kind of expected to go a little slow in the mid lane. Is losing to the counter pick here by Kenzie Zerath. 80 to 62, the current CS score as Chuchu's returns to his lane. But I think with the pace of the game so far and how well Carbon's looked on Rengar in terms of controlling avant garde here, I think he's happy with what he's doing. Yeah, that's fine. So Veritas, no, they BF sword though in the inventory and also going towards the. Uh... Avarice Blade on top of that one. He's going to be actually a pretty strong laner and a very good turret killer. I think it's actually very... Oh, ooh, the catch there. Yozora, not the right place. the new friend. Rengar jumps on top of him. He does get used out there as well by Veritas. So, will save his jungle. It does not donate the double buffs. No. No, they're going to be all right here. And yeah, the, the buffs all got taken away. You notice that Carbon only has the red buff on himself. So that was a three buff that came out for Avant Garde. Uh, but as I was talking about Tristana here, um, I actually think it's very smart that Legacy dodged away from that matchup because I think VF Sword Trist has a really easy time facing uh, a non-Blade of the Ruin King Vayne who's just getting outranged and getting outpoked time and again. Once Ruin King comes in though, and once these outer turrets fall, Vayne gets a field day. I can tell you he's not having a happy time though in this game, Freak. It's Porky. No. He's having a miserable time against yeah. this Malkai. He was actually reasonably well held down. I'm, I'm a little bit surprised by that, but it just seems like Veritas did so well in the 1v1. He actually had an opponent to fight against, and that uh, kind of made all the difference in the world. He's such a good laner. Giving him an actual opponent uh, plays right into Veritas' strengths. Yeah, and Kadrit here just sitting his, his top lane vein, pushing as hard as he can. I do agree that Tristana's siege potential right now, just with BF Sword Rapid Fire, um, really good at taking out turrets. You can see the bottom lane turret is actually had three people at various points come to defend it here for Legacy. Now it's EG mentality actually going to be the 2v2. Line. So we've actually swapped back to what Avant were doing in the early stages of this game. It's true, except yeah, now we've got the, the duo lane with the Rise uh, and with the Tristana, so they've, they've kind of gone fully backwards here. Uh, but I think this is actually pretty smart. Cardrid is going to be really good in these duelist situations where he's not facing... Oh... Maybe, but Porky no, with Porky here. Yeah, nice spotting there of Porky. Does not want to go in. I think could have potentially been a bit more decisive with that play on Van and gotten the kill. Does burn the flash. No, he couldn't have gotten that one. Fair enough. Yeah, the thing is, he, so I've done this so many times, I've under, I've overestimated how far my flash pushes me, and then underestimated how long it takes Condemned to actually hit somebody. He's like, oh, if he doesn't move at all, flash can never put him in the wall. Well, guess what? Champions move sometimes, yep. and, he, and he missed the Condemned. <laughs> So no, no dice there after the play for Kadra, but again, free farming it up, 96 CS, yes, they could bubble there onto Veritas. Tolfo actually though, gonna be used by Nada, he will be with the Zeta Blade, that's a great tidal wave there, but Tally's taking a ton of damage, our exhaust comes through, Veritas is going to get a turn around, but first blood's gonna go to Veritas, potentially second blood as well as Egypt has no way good to go, great blood to the bubble, Zeta Blade follows in, and Nada's gonna clean out the second kill. Absolutely beautiful by Nada, he switched targets and stunned, then exhausted Tally Waka, he was the MVP of that fight absolutely beautiful and still showing that despite having to play what fifth string here on the owner in terms of supports still a very solid player and this tower is going to go down as well with the bf sword trist moving in nicely so legacy falling a little bit behind the gold should equalize more or less with a slight lead now to avant about 300 gold dragons up in a minute as well and avant that bottom lane that we talked about needing to get going in this series is starting to pick up steam and now it's a lot of pressure specifically on cardrid and carbon they the guys by well. Oh, oh, that was adorable. But does flash over. Great snare by Carbon as well. But yeah, it actually could be in trouble. Dangerous game. Pops going on to Kenzie. But a good ultimate there from Choo Choo's. And now Porky's moving in there. Forced to retreat. And that was an amazing actually... route to catch the... Oh, uh... the stun does land. There's Porky going in as well. They will pick up that kill. And very nicely wow. played by Kenzie. Nicely done by Porky as well to show up and continue on in that fight. Yeah, the, the stun from Kenzie set it up. Porky to have the confidence in his teammate to keep going as well. I like the carbon route. He managed to actually catch uh, Yazora as he jumped over the wall. That was a great setup for the first kill, but since then, good stuff at Avant Garde. They're generally winning this. They are, and I think Carbon's Rengar has been held a little bit in check. Good start again. Nada gonna go over the dive. Porky goes in as well. Kenzie picks up an easy kill in his W. Eden does get stunned up. I guess they're just trying to buy time for this tower, but they can't quite pick it up yet. Carbon's off to the side. Chuju's not quite back in. He's always going in on the vein. Kenzie is forced to flash there on Zara. Yazora rotating in his all. Egan, oh goodness. Just heals himself through a Xerath ultimate. 
Yeah, he survived. He actually juked into one of them. That was a bit unfortunate here. But yeah, Avant Garter, they're stronger right now. Not there's away. so much late game focus by Legacy. This is not going to mean it's going to save the turret, but that's it. There, there's so much late game emphasis in the item builds, right? Even uh, a full, uh, not Feral Flare, the one before it, Riggle's Lantern coming out for Carbon there. They're, su they're in such a power low right now. Yazora. There's nothing Legacy can do. Snuck in and killed poor Aegeum there as well. And Dragon's actually up. This is potentially a time where Avant can take this Dragon 5v4. Legacy are fishing so hard for a kill here. Juju doesn't even have his ultimate back up yet, although should get it soon with the rewind. Legacy are going to lose something here, likely the mid tower and the Dragon. And Avant are going to kick themselves into the lead now. They're already a thousand gold ahead. This is really, really good for Avant God. Yeah, it's going to be two and a half thousand at this point. They're very, very good by Avant Guard. They were stronger than their opponents because they have Leona. They can start the fights out. It just seems like the team with the tenacity to start battles and the champions and the playmaking to be stronger early on is routinely winning. And these teams here aren't respecting the fact that, hey, by the way, Leona can catch you. By the way, Alistair can catch you. By the way, these champions can come in and start a battle against you. <clears throat> so don't get greedy. Don't defend things you can't defend. And it's... Legacy got punished in this game for it. Evan Gar got punished in it oh, last this game. This is a great setup. Oh no! The Elder Zone, you are gonna get jumped on. There's a good soul flame, but there's Beautiful. the follow up. And Aegim picks himself up a kill. Now and towards the top lane, there's a big mini wave stacked up here as well. Tal is actually gonna go through the condemn. Does not go up. Does, I guess he didn't want to put him in the front. Carbon goes in there as well. Porky dodges a bit of damage. Good AoE. But Carbon will take up enough. Heals himself Ooh, with the W as well. And now pressure under the tier two. That was very smart by Carbon. Cardio is actually. I don't know how long he's been, how much he's been playing Vayne recently. The Condemn, the actual the pick they got on Kha'Zix, Condemn missed. If Bubble didn't hit, he saved Kha'Zix there. So I'm a little bit worried for Carter. There's been two mistakes so far. That worries me a little here, but great play making. EJ making it happen. Not a going through. Zerath's here as well. Can pop the ultimate teleport. Also coming in, but a good route from Taliwak. It means Legacy are booking it here. There's some ults coming in. Kadra actually gets slow. Does do the last one. Tidal oh! not quite enough, but does knock up. But Tally's gonna have to turn around. Kadra gets exhausted. Nada gets that kill there with his W. Now Tally's turning around, but he cannot finish that kill. And Porky will clean that one out. 7-3 now for Avant-Garde. They are fighting back in game two. Wow, despite a perfectly timed ulti from Egypt, actually stop a Zenith Blade preemptively. Still too much chase to come through. The long range of Kensti is actually able to help out in these fights that you wouldn't expect him to be able to. That's been really important because it allows his team to have fights with more members. Chuchu's wasn't involved, and yet Kensti was. And this is the thing, again, Legacy just, I don't mind how late game their draft is, but, oh, no, Chuchu's does get blue buff, all right, we'll figure that one out. Little Lizard's gonna be annoying, but we'll be okay. Tower did go down in the mid, by the way. Veritas finally cleans yeah. that one out for his team. So 2-1 in turrets there as well. Again, so far when the playmakers aren't on Ejim and Choo Choo's, I just feel like the team plays so much differently, and it's maybe not as conducive to the way they've won games in this tournament so far. Kadra's yeah. brain mechanics, by the way. He's tumbled into so many walls, it's adorable. I love it. Some of that's on purpose, though, you know. Oh, a lot of it's on purpose. That's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. I, just, I didn't know if you were, like, being trolly or not. Would I don't you, know. In fact, would you like to explain to people that may not know Freak how, in fact, that works? Yeah, so Tumble has an animation. And you have to play through the animation before the attack reset triggers, and that actually takes some time. Theoretically, it can be a DPS loss if your attack speed is high enough. It's very unlikely, though. If you are exactly against a wall, there is literally nowhere to move. The animation doesn't play in the slightest, and it's just a straight attack reset, plus, of course, the bonus damage. So if you hug a wall, you can increase your DPS by tumbling right as your attack comes out. And probably the coolest little uh, use of the interaction is near the little sign near Baron buff. Yep. You just stand there attacking Baron and tumble every time it's on cooldown. It then feels you, awesome. And you feel really sad when like the puddle goes under you and you're like, yeah. I have to move. Yeah. But DPS levels, man, come on. I know, it's really sad. What about my tumble up time? Okay. Do the same thing with Draven and Axes, because I can't catch them anyway. <laughs> so you hide in a corner and they can only jump on top of you. It's great. <laughs> Pro chips here with Freak is oh! gets bubble. Oh, Tidal Wave actually gonna burn Flash forward there as well. They're gonna try and find him. Rango's actually spotted him. They're gonna sleep right on top of Paul Yazora's Kha'Zix and a very aggressive pick here. Chuchu's with the bomb. We'll clean up that kill. Man, even on Nami, Ejim burns ult and Flash to pick up one kill. Now, to be worth it, they gotta get more than just a kill and nothing else out of this. Legacy get a pink cord on the enemy blue buff. They have some pressure in the bottom lane. Yeah, I'd like to see this... Uh, out of turret in the bottom lane get pressured, I think. And that's where they're going, it seems like. Yeah. But that was two ults and a flash. If it's not just one kill, I don't know if that's actually worth it. But it looks like they're going to get the turret, so good job, Legacy. Yep. So that objective does go down. They'll even up the turrets here in this game. 
And Agent, we talked about it. It's almost like he heard me. I was like, you know what? Nami, not so much a playmaking champion. He's like, mm -hmm. nah, I got this. I got the Nami mechanics. Yep. And his tidal wave has actually been impeccable in this game so far. So no matter what the yep. champion is, Egypt yep. seems to be on top of it. Egypt is pretty crazy. Carbon does land the slow. He can catch Nada with the jump here. Oh, he W too early. He missed the root. He could have had a root right now. Oh no, does go in once again. Nada now getting aggressed on by Van. Getting chunked down. Very hard. Great Good stun into the wall. And there he does move in for a mini stun tally though. Has picked up that first kill. Now Veritas in a whole host oh, of trouble. Oh, flash. Yeah, great flash. Oh my god, oh, it's Cartridge! So yes. it's a great flash to drop, but it's not enough. Now Tally gonna move a good route onto Porky as he'll eat the room for his and almost enough damage for a third kill. And Ken Steve for some reason's in the top lane. Carbon's Rengar, pretty freaking incredible. Yeah, yep. I do not understand the split push there. That should be Tristana or Maokai only. The guys who go to a long lane and push by themselves. Ken Steve's big asset is that he's got so much reach. It's not that long though. He's no. got to stay around mid to do that. Zerathor not global. Maybe once in testing, and then never again. Uh, here close to that, yeah. Yeah, mid tower now going to go down. It, it did sound silly. It was a little silly. As the mid turret goes down, Legacy three for three on turrets as well. Kind of climbing back that deficit quite nicely. In fact, there's less than a thousand gold now between these two teams. And Avon had about a three thousand gold lead a few moments ago. Gonna have to look for something else now. As Dragon's gonna be back up in thirty seconds. And you said how much you like Zillion Rengar. That was that playing out. The turret finally dying from all of this. Really good comeback stuff by Legacy. They were down so incredibly far. Now, Avantgarde, they are in the lead. Ken is actually still doing very well. He's still up 20 CS. And by the way, Tristan is about to have an Infinity Edge. There's a lot of great tools here for Avantgarde. In fact, if Tris does finish IE, it will be very hard to win the Dragon fight for Legacy. Yep, and I think I was a bit worried about Carbon's Ringer in the early game. He made some decent plays, but couldn't quite find any more ganks. But this mid-game, as we almost always credit Legacy for, when they're together as a group, they just play so well. And Carbon's Ringer, he's ready to make the plays and initiate for his team. So the poke going back and forth. Ward control right now is avant-garde. It's good by them to keep the vision up. Three ward in the Dragon Pit. You typically want to put a pink in the pit to keep those wards down. Same with Baron. That you poke. want one in that watches all the wards? That poke from Zareth as well. Frustrating. There it is, good by Nada. There's Nada does clean out. He's gonna take a bit of damage. Kenzie moves in instead. Good tumble though from Kadrid. And Avant, they want to fight for this next dragon. I think they realize they're at a really good power point. Veritas has not chopped yet though. That's... I don't oh, man, Carbon. Gonna go in onto Yazora. Tidal Wave does come in. Almost splashes into it. Solar Flare will disperse, though, as the members do move out. Now, Yazora, he's getting aggressed on Porky, though. picked up Cartridge up towards the back, and Legacy scatter very, very quickly. Kind of initiated a fight on two different sides. Even going down to Veritas, getting a recent tally. Goes down to Zed, the double for Triss. And Veritas gonna move forward. Zareth now looking for his ultimate. Does get Carbon and Choo Choo's wow. twice with two shots. I don't know if they've got enough movement speed though. Actually, Nada now getting aggressed on two. Just like, hey buddy, how you doing? Bomb will go up. No oh, oh, does get the kill. Wow. Porky's starting Baron now for Avant-Garde. This is really risky, but Veritas has a lot of damage on him right here. This could work out just fine. That was one of very few battles I saw Nada actually misplay. Throughout the mid game, his Leon had been so good. Carbon very low on health. Juju's gonna try for this one. He dealt. He has ulti still. This is poke from Zareth. Stun Lance. Oh. Juju's one hit from dead. That has to be careful if I get a fight, it does pop the ultimate Carbon. Moving around, this Baron's quite low here. Kenzie does get Carbon, that's gonna secure the Baron bomb. Does go down there as Yazora will smite it off. Now Ejim has gone a little too far forward, getting critted there by Trip. Oh. Double kill there for Kenzie as he uses that W. Moving forward there is on Juju's low. Great nice. W for the triple. And Avant, they power ahead in gold once again. Kenzie 4 0 4, death's not found. He is doing amazing here. And they are 5,000 gold up. He's been crushing in team fights. I love actually how much easily landed lockdown is on Avant Guard. That sets up Zareth. Part of the reason Zareth is balanced is because you can dodge his ultimate. Guess what happens when you can't dodge any of his spells? You die. Yeah, he's a little bit less balanced. And uh, <laughs> it's a really good comp here. Kensti, despite having a really, really rough game one and getting outperformed by Choo Choo's, he's flipped that entirely. Kensti's been amazing this game been one of the primary damage sources here. And with this kind of a gold lead, Avant Guard have a very big cushion to sit on. Yeah, 5,000 gold ahead. And they've got the mid game combo as well. They can do what Legacy did to them in the last game there. Mm -hmm. And they're gonna pressure over this Dragon Legacy. I think intelligently realize there's no way they wanna fight. If they're winning this game, it's gonna be rather late. Ooh, Bubble almost gets it, but Veritas yeah. will get it with Tristana Crits. Daz now goes Infinity Edge, by the way. So big power jump there for Trist as well.
Yeah, and Legacy. Bam Scepter and Zerk as well means he's big. Yeah, time to sit on their hands for a little bit, Legacy. I mean, not literally, because they do need to touch their keyboards and mice to keep playing, but that is going to be turtling rather hard here, especially while AB have this Baron. And I want to see how many turrets these guys get. Avantgarde have already knocked down all three outers, but they've got a whole Baron buff to work with here. It's going to be at least mid tier two. They should get at least one more turret, likely two to three. Kadra, by the way, is just down the bottom, split pushing. I don't blame him. He doesn't even have a static ship to help with the wave clearing. Like, he's actually don't have that much wave clearing in general. He's rejoining basically... too late. He needed to be here for the inhibitor turret push. It's at half health because he wasn't here. Yeah, and they've got basically just Rise, and I guess Zillion Bombs, but it's quite tricky to time them. So Legacy just don't have the wave clear in these sort of no, sieges. They don't. And they've got Tristana here for AB. And oh. there's no way Vayne can outpush Tristana, so there's not a lot that Legacy can do. They're going to keep taking poke. They've got a... There's oh, one. God. There's... Oh, good flash! Troops them all as well! Now, poke is going to dive in as well. Kenzie's scrooging with an AD carry kill, and Tally's forced to run away. Now, Truth's going to get a grip on. We'll turn it around, though. There's Kenzie with a double, though. Rengar's going to jump in on. Truth's will lose his ultimate on himself. Carbon is trying to find a target, but there's no nothing attractive here. Tally is somehow all the way towards the mid lane, trying to proxy the way. Veritas, though, on a killing spree. Now, picks up Zillion as well. That Truth's 4 1 and 16. Hippie's going to go down. And the and crazy thing is, I was going to say this is game over, but it's so early in the game 24 minutes, the respawn timers are short. Avant Guard, man, they are crushing now. Kensti, 6 0 oh, 5. He is massive. He did so much for his team early game. Not as good landing CC as well. And honestly, I don't know why people were banning Zillion in the first place. Chuji just does not look comfortable on this champion. His ults are late. He's not revving anyone but himself. He lost lane. This is not the same Chuji we saw in game one. No, and it's just a thing where I feel like Chuji's. Just needs to be on a champion that gives him the ability to make plays for his team. Again, yeah. he's not a shot caller. He just kind of sits there, wins his lane because he's really good, and then goes from there. But he does make plays, and his team's great at following up. Legacy just haven't executed this particular comp particularly well. No. They had a couple elements here, but it, it didn't pan out. Karjid was set up in a 1v1 top lane. He got a turret out of it, but not much more. They were set up in an amazing 2 on 2 early on to try to hold down Pork. He did a pretty good job of this one. And Carbon actually missed his first few ultimates, and Chudus just didn't do much this game. So AB now with a massive, massive lead here in this game, approaching 10,000 gold lead territory here. It's Carbon, Carbon, sorry. Clean out the white. Similar names. Very similar. Tallywhackers rise as well. It's been fine, but when you have a team that's looking to go this late, you're not going to look particularly good against a big mid-game team like the one Avant has put together here for game two. Yeah, and it's, it's Legacy's willingness to keep fighting over and over again. They, they've actually... I mean, this is kind of how Chiefs lost to them, and it's kind of how Legacy are losing here. They're not waiting for the comps to come online. Oh, Pokyo and Kadra actually does get a tumble out of that ultimate. Tuchu's going to come in and ult him as well, but he's going to take probably too much damage. He's still kiting. He's actually not dead yet. But the rest of AV are moving in. The ta uh, Talibaka is teleporting in, though. Kadra can he keep himself alive. Not on my time through the silver. What's his Zora? Actually going through his own. Veritas not gets to go on the rise. There's Kensi with the kill on the vein. Renko picks up Kha'Zix, so that's kind of cute. The Predator slays. Man, and Veritas sold out Tallywhacker here as well. There's just nothing really left here for Legacy to do. Mid lane, they've got Supers coming in. They've got a Tristana with enough health to push. This could be the game. Yep, sorry, the Hunter slays the Predator. Got that one mixed up there, but Veritas just doesn't care right now. Poke being thrown up by Kenzie as well. Played spectacularly on the Zerth, 7-0-5. In this game, three damage items very nicely on at the 27-minute mark. And no signs of slowing down here for AB. They know they've pretty much got this game locked up. And 10,000 gold is our official gold lead. All right, so they pushed the minion waves in. They were not able to close the game out just yet, but Avant Guard, yeah. So at this point, okay, heal up, get your last items in. Blaster 23 and Veritas is the best item you can buy here, so he's doing incredibly strong, incredibly high damage. He's a full item above Cardrid. I mean, everyone's ahead here. So get your lanes under control, middle push for free. Take one more in him and then siege the Nexus and you're good. Yeah, and Baron is coming back up in a minute 30 as well. That's practically uncontestable for Legacy at this stage in the game. And for me, as we kind of wind out this game, because it seems like Avant are going to be able to close this up quite academically, I wonder what this does to Legacy in terms of psychology, particularly because Carbon is on Rengar, a champion that he did not expect to get all series here in this best of five. Mm. He's played well, but he just maybe he feels like he doesn't have the impact. And the worst thing is to pick a champion that you know you're so competent with, lose the game, and does not want to play it again. Yeah, I just think so. In my mind, if, if I were watching this game and I was part of Legacy, uh, I would say they screwed up champ select. Choo Choo shouldn't play Zillion. I thought Carbon actually was part of the reason they held on to the mid game, his Rengar. I would definitely play that champion more. 
Diving in on the to actually get the snare. This might be the start of a comeback. Never mind, Carbon can't finish out. In fact, uh, Corky, sorry, has teleported here on top of Talia. Like a will pop the ultimate. That's a lot of damage under that pretty squishy rise. Cartridge knocks him back with the condemned. And they'll be able to get him out. Good snare as well by Carbon. But Porky will flash forward. Carbon flashes out as well. But Chuchu is just going to get dumped on. Uses his ultimate, but there's just nowhere for him to go. Veritas even pushing forward with Kensi as well. There's his Zora picking up the kill into Chuchu. And Legacy, one last push was tried, but it's not going to be enough. Uh, this is going to be a dying inhibitor. 5v4. Life is good for these guys. And yeah, for, the, for Legacy, I think you fix your champs like issues. You don't play this super late game comp that has very few plays that you can make. Great start, this is bad for Carbon. Goodbye, Carbon. Gets the legendary now at 8-0 and 5. And I might look to equalize here in game two and make it a best of three. The first next star will fall there. Veritas picks up that one. And we're gonna have another one falling down as well. And Tristano is banned away from Cardred in a lot of games this weekend, including game one. Veritas saying, hey buddy, I can play this too. Oh, beautiful condemn. Cute kill there as Tally's gonna pick up credit, but we're done. The Nexus will fall here. And Avantgarde, excuse me, will pick up game two. Absolutely great play by Avantgarde. I love not as Leona, actually. Rough early lane, okay, fine. Got out of it, landed a lot of clutch initiations. What I really loved about him was he was actually able to predict rank guard jumps, and Carbon would show up to a target stun. It was freaking ridiculous. I loved it. Avantgarde played great this game. They've tied it back up, got ourselves a series. We could have ourselves our third regional champion of the year. Yeah, and we can see Legacy looking pretty chipper at the uh, in going into the start of game two. Look a little less happy now, understandably. Coach Mikael sure. there on your screen as well, kind of getting his team through. And Mickey, not just like a great player who is obviously watching these games, is it in games sometimes the pressure of maybe not seeing everything? Can see a lot here, of course, with what well, spectating and yeah. not just giving his team the props, but he's a very positive player. He, that Good. was almost his role on the team, actually, was. Split push and keep the team happy. Emotional leader. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, guys, don't worry. Just play. Just go to late game. Just play the late game. Which is something that, honestly, Legacy needed to do right there. This was, this was a team that was building early game leads over and over and over and over again. And despite pushing Ejim down on something like Nami, who's less of an initiator, was still initiating. They still had the tools to play early game, but they didn't pick champions for it. And they, they tried to play for early game anyway, and they got caught out because they're getting outmatched in the two-on-two, so there's no way to win those kinds of battles. You're running tier zillion, tier rise, and trying to fight it 12 minutes in. Not going to work. you got to be smarter about that. Yep, so we do have a replay from that last game as well. So let's jump straight into that. And Freak, tell us what happened here in this last little engage. This is one of the last few dives. So yeah, Cardred has to flash to dodge one. Somebody heals to dodge the other. It's just a, a, you know, just a strong tower dive. There's very low health bars. Now, Choo is nowhere around to, like, save his AD carry. He's not playing support role at all. He's playing like he's Zed, split off by himself. And so it's very easy cleanup where Zillion does no damage, revives himself, and just it's really a champion here. Great stun lands on Choo Choo's, right? Good cleanup here. But this is, this is honestly, it, it was a game of legacy not knowing how to play the team composition. That was the big story here. Avantgarde played good. I do not want to understate that. that uh, there were just great individual plays everywhere, kind of down the lineup. But legacy shouldn't look like this again. No, and I guess we're going to find out. We've got a game three coming up as the teams do tie it up here in the Oceanic Regional Grand Finals. Guys, let's take a quick break.